Thank you, Michelle. I'll go ahead and switch my screen over here. All right, so I'm going to be walking you guys through today um, a demonstration of Project Insights with uh, Power BI. So I'll be walking you through and showing you in action some of the things that Michelle just showed you guys. Uh, but before we do, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a framework around uh, Power BI. Power BI is a, uh, a Microsoft uh, cloud-based uh, BI and analytical tool that Microsoft released about a year and a half or so ago. Uh, it's been probably one of the most innovative products I've seen Microsoft come out with in most recent times. Uh, every three weeks or so, they're introducing new visualizations, new connectors, uh, new capabilities. Uh, it's actually a very exciting tool. Uh, but before we jump into uh, the uh, Project Insight part of the product, I just want to give you a little background on the, the solution itself. Uh, so Power BI is either a standalone uh, BI analytics tool, or if you own Office 365, it's fully integrated with your Office 365 uh, environments. Um, over on the left-hand side, I'm going to go ahead and open up the navigation. And so you'll see here within Power BI, I have different workspaces or groups that I can work within. So I'm right now on my personal workspace. So these are my dashboards and reports. But I can also work with other teams that maybe like project workspaces or groups. Uh, but I can actually, you know, drill into those reports as well across my organization. But I'm going to stay here in my workspace because one of the things that we're showing here is the ability to personalize your uh, reporting and, and analytics experience. And so here, I'm on one of my dashboards that I've created. So what you'll see here over here in my dashboard is, is a bunch of pinned, uh, pinned tiles. And so just like Pinterest, I can go through my reports uh, that that uh, Tivity has created through its uh, Project Insight, and I can actually pin the reports and data that's important to me. So every person could have actually a personalized dashboard that gives them relevant data. So for example, here I'm looking at project work by ROI, um, by budget size here in a, in a bubble chart. I can see project work here um, by size uh, in, a, in a bar tree, bar tree, excuse me, uh, type of, of visualization. I may want to look at estimated cost versus my benefits, uh, so these are all just tiles that I find very important to me. And what's nice about this dashboard is if it's a dashboard that you think somebody else in your organization might uh, enjoy looking at or thinks it's appropriate, you can easily share this information uh, by just typing in their email address and email, and they'll have access to your dashboard, and you guys can collaborate on, on this information here. Uh, what's also nice about these dashboards is uh, you can actually create alerts. So, for example, as a manager, maybe I'm looking at my average pro uh, project costs here, uh, starting to increase and I want an alert if this thing gets over twenty five thousand dollars on an average I'm sorry uh, average um, Average project cost so if I wanted to say hey out of alert if projects get over twenty five thousand dollars You know on average, please send me an email so I can address this immediately uh, Maybe it's account of active issues or overdue tasks uh, And you can create whatever types of alerts that you want in your in your dashboards What's also nice about these dashboards is the ability to kind of drill in and get additional information. So, for example, here's a nice portfolio strategic bubble chart. Uh, but maybe I want to drill in and, and do some slicing and dicing of that information. So I've drilled in here, and I can see by portfolio. Uh, I can drill into each one of those to see how well we're doing in, <clears throat> excuse me, ROI or risk or cost. And so I can kind of drill around and uh, get additional information in these little tiles. The other thing I wanted to kind of jump into is, is some of the pre-built reports. So just by you know clicking on these these tiles here, I can drill in to see information. For example, this is one of our project uh, requests or demand management reports. And here you'll see I can see all demand coming in to the organization. I can see them by priority, uh, how it well aligns to the business, the type of request. I can see the estimated costs and benefits. I got my nice bubble chart of alignment versus prioritization. I can see how well we're spending to our drivers. So if we are we spending uh, enough money to our priorities of our drivers. And then I get detail down here of my project requests and projects that are going on. What's nice about um, the Project Insights reporting capabilities is the ability to slice and dice the information. So if I wanted to look at just certain types of projects, uh, for example, I only want to look at uh, maintenance, uh, internal readiness, and business analytic projects or, or requests, I can quickly just select those types of projects and see how well uh, those projects align with our business. Uh, if I only want to look at certain types of drivers, so maybe I only want to look at ones that are um, highly aligned with our business and somewhat aligned with our business, we can quickly look at that and start to do some analysis on that as well. 
And to show you how this works, you know, these are these are reports. So as I showed up here, there are dashboards that are these are information that you can pin. As you can see, I can take information here and I just simply pin that to my dashboard, to my personal dashboard or to our community dashboard. But we also have underneath that are the data sets or the reports. And so right now I'm showing you the project requests one, which is the demand management, but you may also want to look at a portfolio status. And so this is now projects that are in flight. And I may want to keep tabs on how well these projects are doing. So here's a project summary report where it gives me uh, my portfolios of projects, some key information, as well as KPIs against all these projects. I can quickly get rolled up information, for example, how many projects are at, three, at risk, three projects are at risk, 22 are over budget, 22 are behind schedule, I have seven active risks and eight overdue issues in my portfolio. Just like uh, the demand management and project requests uh, report, I can actually take this information and filter it out. So as an organization, I may only want to focus in on at risk and in troubled projects. So I'm going to go ahead and just select my overall health here and say I want to look at red and yellow. I could drill into the portfolios if I wanted to, but I'm going to just stay here at the at risk and, and projects that are in trouble. So now I got a, a view of my projects that are in trouble and I could now drill in if I like and I can look at the schedule. So now I can see there's 12 overdue milestones and 149 overdue tasks. Our duration is a, a variance of 2,565 days. Uh, I can drill and see some Gantt information. I can look at my cost. So I can see we have problems here, obviously, because the budget is zero and we have forecasts of almost $2 million and we've spent $155,000. I can look at cost over time. So I can actually look at how well we're, we're planned and versus actuals. And I can take this information and I can actually drill in. So if I wanted to look at it by month, or if I want to look at it by days, or you just look at it from a quarter standpoint. These are all interactive types of, of uh, reports. And so if I also want to just look at certain types of projects, so only the projects that are at risk from a cost perspective, I can see what that looks like uh, from the at risk or the ones that are somewhat on schedule. So you can see how interactive the reporting capabilities are. I can also drill into work information. So if I wanted to see how well we're doing with these projects that are at risk from a work uh, perspective as well as time here. I also can look across my portfolio at risks and uh, issues. So I can see here having a cost exposure of $1 with probability of 25% uh, in those at-risk projects. I um, may also want to look at a roll-up of, of issues. So currently have five overdue issues at, on my, on my at-risk and in troubled projects. So this is a really quick way to be able to see how well your portfolio uh, is doing. What's also nice is the ability uh, within these reports is to capture trend. So Michelle talked a little bit about uh, being able to not only see at this point in time how well we're doing, but maybe we want to look at how well we've done in the past. So what I'm going to do here is show how I can take the same types of report and go, well, in the fourth quarter, it looks like we only have one project at risk, um, 15 over budget and five behind schedule. But, you know, have we improved or are we getting worse? And so one of the things you can do is, is be able to uh, snapshot this information for trend analysis. So you can see here quickly. Uh, in the first quarter of this year, we actually had six projects at risk and 16 over budget and six behind schedule. Um, so as we go through and look at this from a time phase standpoint, we get better. We go from the second quarter to two projects at risk, 16 over budget, um, and so forth. So you can kind of see that we are improving over time. And you can do this with all types of those same types of reports. So we have schedule, how well we've improved, uh, cost, you know, what's the trend look like. And so what that gets you to is a point to where you can actually get visualization to see uh, how well overall our portfolio is performing. So you can see your overall health. Uh, we went from the first quarter from four that were in trouble, two were at risk, and 22 uh, were doing well. Uh, as time moved on, we can quickly see now in this point of time, we only have one that's, in tr um, that's at risk and 27 that are doing well. So we've actually prove overall very very well here in this portfolio. And so you can kind of drill into each area, schedules, costs, issues, work, uh, or any other metrics that you're looking for, but allows you to really kind of get a good sense of are we really doing better or worse as an organization. And if you're wanting to look at more data point driven information, here's another type of trend analysis of you can see for, for since the beginning of this year that our budget has increased. Uh, something has happened to for us to have to to incur more budget and obviously it shows here that the forecasting of the, of, the, of the cost within a project has gone up as well so it's probably what drove that budget but our cost variance has gone down so it looks like uh, probably because of the increase of the budget but it looks like our cost variance has gone down so we're improving there we also see here we have a uh, number of late tasks have gone down so we're improving 
and overall getting things done, our issues have gone down, number of changes have gone down, and so forth. You can get the idea of our cost performance index as well as our estimated as completions all seem to be improving. We can also take this data and start doing some more targeted types of analysis. So here's the CPI, which is your cost performance index versus your schedule performance index. And we can see we have a target area that we want to achieve. Uh, you can see we have uh, the VoIP phones up here, but we also see we have quite a few projects at risk. But we can take a look at how well this is trending. So we can see how well were we doing um, at the beginning of the year uh, versus the end of the year. Right? And you can, it's nice you could actually take this and, and put it into an animation. So if you wanted to kind of show how everything kind of moved around over time, uh, this will give you a good sense of how we've improved from the past and, and how we can improve going forward. But because we're capturing this information, we can also take this information and perform forecasting or predictive analytics. So uh, one of the abilities here is to show, in this example, actual cost predictions. So as you can see, here's our actual cost. You can see our trend, but here it's actually the system is forecasting uh, what they, the system thinks your actual cost will be going out into the future. And we put in a variance here of 10% uh, of up or down. So it's basically saying you have, this is our projection to where the cost will, actual cost will be, but it could be anywhere between here and there as well. So it kind of understands a, um, you know, a plus or minus uh, percentage, if you, if you will. All right. So coming back to here, I want to show you some additional reports that we have in the system uh, that are out of the box. Uh, financial management is something that's really important to you. We have a financial report pack that allows you to see uh, financial information. For example, here are your benefits that you have by portfolio. You have your cost and actual costs. And again, you can you can drill into all these reports. I'm looking at my portfolios, like cut costs. Well, maybe I only want to look at the cut cost one itself so I can drill into the cut cost and I can see here my benefits uh, goals as well as how much I plan to spend versus I've actually spent I can also see my trend over time for these these financial uh, reports and obviously as we showed earlier we have uh, a wide variety of different financial reports that uh, customers are looking for from capex to opex and and, and things like that uh, right here in this report pack itself Project status, so you know, we talked about uh, portfolio status of individual, I mean, sorry, a, a portfolio of, of, of multiple projects, uh, but we also have uh, report packs for individual status for individual projects. So here's an example of a VoIP one uh, where uh, a project manager can uh, pull in data from the project management system to be able to show quickly how VoIP is doing, get a description, project status, but also then drill in the details around just that project as well. So you can see here we have 80 tasks that have not started, I uh, completed 129 of them. Uh, fortunately, 100% of them are over scheduled uh, or behind schedule, excuse me. Uh, here again, we show drilling into the project costs, the project uh, work. Uh, we can see the resource plan around the project, so we can see what was planned and what was what is actual. Um, if we want to look at any issues around that project, we can see we here we have one high active project or uh, um, sorry issue as well as one medium. And here we have the 50 cents exposure risk and 25 probability um, on this particular um, risk for this project. So you see not only do you get the portfolio level information within the report pack, you can actually drill into the projects themselves and, and get the details at the project level. Now resources are always a big um, question for an organization is, you know, do we have the right people working on the right jobs? What's our What's our allocation or capacity? And so we have a report pack that quickly lets you look into the data itself and get visualization of that information. So here you can quickly see um, we don't have a lot of people working at this time. We have 89% um, availability. We can see where people are planned to work, what types of projects. We have a lot of people working on programs um, and our services types of work. Um, and you can see overall work versus capacity uh, here. We also can see how many people are pending requests for resources and how much work is being pended. So we probably want to get on this and get people signed because we don't have a lot of uh, people working really well right now. So we might want to sign these, these pending approvals to people. Uh, just like in uh, the other reports we've talked about, you can take this information and slice it and dice it. So you can actually look at how well my resources are doing on a specific portfolio. Um, you can also look at it by role. So maybe I just want to look at the QA and, and support team and how well they're being allocated. Um, and so you can actually take all this information and slice it uh, the way that makes the most sense for you. And then you can drill in from there 
and look at things like utilization, um, availability, commitment versus planned. Uh, so here's showing what we, we committed to, then this is what we're planning to, and this is what we're actually achieving towards. Um, we can look at our engagements and how well uh, we have aligned our team to the projects, as well as even down to the tactical uh, resource assignments. So who's working on what and when. Uh, so you see you get from very high level um, resource capacity uh, information to down into uh, the very detail of who's working on what and when. Uh, after forecasting information, obviously knowing where people are spending time is very important for some organizations. So we also have a timesheet analyzer report pack. Uh, allows you to get visibility into all your timesheet information. So here's a, a dashboard a view of some of that information here. Um, and I can quickly see how well who's spending time. So you see Daniel Williams obviously spending the majority of the time. But, uh, you know, again, filtering this information down, I can get into specifics of who worked on what, uh, what's the, which, which hours are being uh, waiting or, or, or sitting for approval. Uh, so I can do some compliance reports. So there's time sheets, nine timesheets in progress. Eight of them are pending approval and six are approved. Uh, so you can get some information on that as well. I can get into billable versus non-billable, so I can see how much work is, is, is being done that we can't bill to our customers. And so here we just got some additional reports, non-working time as well, so administrative, sick, vacation. Uh, so, so we also have that here as well. Now, to, to create these reports and to modify them, they're, they're all open source in the sense of once you get the report pack, you guys can do whatever you want. We offer a training class to help get you trained up on, on Power BI. Uh, but, you know, creating a report is, is, is really easy. So I'll show you to go from first starting from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and grab, you know, like a project request. So here I have a blank slate here. And let's just say quickly I want to look at, um, obviously, uh, a project name, and I want to look at estimated benefits, and I want to look at it by, let's say, um, by project type. And so I quickly have just added in some columns here. So you can see I have a nice little table. It shows me what's going on here. Uh, but I can also easily switch this over. So if I want to look at a pie chart or a bar chart, so this is how easy it is for end users to come in here on the web and be able to um, take this information and, and build out the, the reports that they need. Another way people can get information um, is, is just simply just asking a question uh, in Power BI. So I'm going to come back up to my dashboard here, and I'm not going to save this report. And I'm going to just come up here to the top, and I'm going to say, hey, uh, I need to know what the uh, average work variances are by project. So I say, hey, show me <clears throat> the average work variance. And you'll see here as I'm typing, it's, it's already starting to think for me and saying, okay, what do you, I think you're, you're saying work variance here, or maybe you're, maybe you're saying something else. Maybe you're wanting to look at cost. So, but I can quickly just see here, I just, you know, work variance by project name, right? And so what you'll see here um, is the system will quickly build out this report. So you'll notice here down below, it's showing me a, um, a, 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 a bar chart here with uh, each project and their variances of, of work. But maybe I want to look at it differently. Maybe I want to see uh, by pi. Let me show me by pi. I want to look at it by pi. So you can quickly see how easy it is for me to just type in a question like it is in Bing or Google and then be able to get the information you need. And once you get the information you need, all you need to do is just pin this to your dashboard. So now I'll say uh, this is something I like. Let's go ahead and just pin this to my, my existing dashboard. And now this is a report I will get every time I look at my dashboard. Now if you're using uh, Windows 10 or um, or Cortana, you can actually ask Cortana, so you don't even have to type this information, you could actually just say, hey Cortana, show me the average work variance by project by name, and it will actually appear up on your screen. So this kind of just wraps up the high level of, of the power of Project Insights with Power BI. Um, love to show you more if you're interested. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to contact us, and I will Turn it over to Michelle.